Hello everyone. How are you this Friday afternoon UK time? My name is Carl. I'm here to give you a webinar about finding work online as a TEFL teacher. Um, I'm in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Please in the chat say where you are in the world. I love to know where people are. I've already seen that some people have said hello watching on YouTube or Facebook. Um, some people in Thailand, Dr. Phil. I'm sorry if I uh, shortened your name, doctor. Um, Roberto is somewhere on this side of the Thames. I'm not quite sure what side that is. Christina in Bournemouth, hello. Um, please put in the chat, let me know where you are. We here at the Teflog love to know where people are around the world. I, as I said, I'm in Northern Ireland where I work as a trainer for the TEFL org. So if you do any weekend practical courses in Northern Ireland or parts of the Republic of Ireland, you might have me as a trainer. I also work as an online teacher for myself. I don't work for any companies. I work through my own um, students. I found my own students and I get work through that. I also work as an examiner for a couple of different examination boards. So I'm hoping with my experience and my qualifications, I will be able to answer any questions that you might have about teaching English as a foreign language, primarily teaching online, but also teaching um, face to face, if that's what the question is that you have. Um, all the hellos are coming in now. Look, Phuket, lovely. Oh, I'd love to be in Phuket. Um, Mackie in Vienna. Um, Ildiko in Hungary, Laura in Leeds, Elaine in Orlando, Carlo in the Philippines, uh, Canada, Birmingham, Isle of Wight, lots of places all over the world. Jamaica as well. Oh, Henry. I'd love to be in Jamaica right now. It's a bit sunnier probably than Northern Ireland. So, as I said, the theme of this webinar is um, finding work online. And um, I'm going to go through a little presentation here and I'm going to also show you some uh, sites, some uh, like posts, some jobs that I found that I think might be interesting for you if you are looking to become an online teacher of English as a foreign language. First thing I want to say is that on our website here at the TEFL org and our website is tefl.org. We have a blog section here. If you click on that and you type in teach online, this job, this, sorry, this job, this uh, blog post is fantastic at giving more, much more information than I'm going to give you over the next hour. So um, there are loads and loads of links on this page to lots of different jobs. They're so sorted by sort of worldwide, covering the whole world, Asia, Central and South America, Europe. Um, and then there's a couple more at the end and there's some also advice at the bottom about how to be uh, find work as a TEFL teacher. So please don't click on that yet and go look at that. Please stay with me for a little bit. But if you do want more information afterwards, and I'm sure Alan, who is monitoring the chat, Alan says hello, um, will put that link into the chat as well so you'll be able to see it. So um, the first thing I want to talk about about finding work online because about five or six years ago, I set myself up as an online teacher. I had been working as a, un as a university teacher in England and I moved to Northern Ireland and I wanted to become self-employed. And what I did was I looked for jobs as a teacher online. Before that, I'd been teaching all around the world, but I had been teaching online in various different forms for sort of the fi last five, six years working for companies before moving to being an independent teacher where I work for myself. Now, one of the best places to look for work, if you have your qualification, you've got your 120 hour qualification. And if anybody's got any questions about qualifications, please put them in the chat. We'll get round to them or Alan might even be able to answer them before I get to. One of the best places to look for work is Facebook. Now, I know not everybody out there will have a Facebook account. I get that. And also I do realize that there's limitations. Some places can access, can't access Facebook, but it is still a good, very good, excellent way, in fact, of finding work as an online teacher. Now, um, the best way to do it is to find the discussion groups within Facebook. So in the search bar at the top, type in, well, first of all, 
look for our one tefl.org and if i just show you our one now i'm logged into my facebook here so there's going to be your facebook the, the way you look at it might be slightly different but also my people might start talking to me i'm going to have to cancel that as quick as i can if i can the tefl org group is fantastic for asking and answering questions with people that are already teaching online there's lots of people in there teaching online who might be able to answer any questions you have but also there are, um, uh, look, for example, here, this gentleman, Ryan Roberts, uh, he's posted a job um, in this one's in Madrid. Uh, sorry, in the north of Spain, not Madrid, but there's information there. Um, this person below me, Carmen San Diego, has also put a post in there about teaching Latin American students. So this is a really good place to join up to ask any questions. It's also monitored by people like myself and people like Alan, who um, knows loads about teaching English a foreign language. We might be able to help you, or if not, somebody else will help you. So that's the first group I'd recommend. But it's not the only one. And one of the things that you will find is that there are lots out there and they have lots of different letters before and after them. So these are some of the ones that I'm a member of and some of the ones where I see jobs posted. And as you can see, there are quite a few already here and I haven't listed them all. Your ESL teacher recruitment, TEFL slash ESL slash English teaching jobs, ESL teaching job board, TEFL TESOL and English teachers resources and jobs, ESL English teachers jobs, and of course you've got to have an emoji because it's 2022. Uh, online ESL jobs, jobs are wide, online teaching jobs slash EF, ESL. Now, don't be put off because we are the TEFL.org company teaching English and foreign language. And if you have a qualification with us, if you've done one of our fantastic courses, then you might think, oh, I can't do this one because it's ESL. I can't do this one because it's SOL. I can't do this one because it's ESL. No. EFL, ESL are similar. It's just different parts of the world call it different things. Americans tend to call it ESL. British people tend to call, call, um, call it EFL, okay? So just don't worry about it. They're interchangeable, they're fine, okay? There are slight differences in them, but if you've got an EFL qualification, you'll be able to apply for an ESL job. And if you've got an ESL qualification from a different company, a different company, then why would you, sorry, why would you? Uh, then you can apply for EFL jobs, okay? Please, if you've got any questions at all, put them in the chat. Or if you've got any questions about anything else, please put them in the chat. So what I would suggest is you go through and you join them all and you check those every day if you're really looking for work. OK, so I'm going to show you one, for example. Um, this one is online teaching jobs, uh, bracket ESL. Alan, I don't know whether we can make it a little bit bigger just for a second. Is that possible? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, again, there's people asking that, but there's also jobs in here, English teachers and tutors. OK, this one is from people who have a native like North American accent. You've got to be able to read it all and check if you are eligible for it. OK, um, uh, these people that this person here is looking for someone to be a streamer with life. I've got no idea what that is. Might be something that you like. Probably they're looking for someone with a a EFL type qualification okay um, then scroll down um, this person here is offering an online ESL teaching job they can do from home you can choose to teach adults or kids the schedule is super flexible rate is seven dollars to thirteen dollars an hour there we go this company here is offering is is hiring and it goes on and on through all of the groups okay so um, they go some jobs in China here being advertised. This is a they're looking for online ESL teachers with a passion for teaching kids. So there's lots of and there's another group here. It's another group here. Lots of things going on on Facebook. So the first thing I would recommend you do is get yourself on Facebook. Join all of these groups. I'm going to show that again. These ones here. Or you can just do a search EFL jobs search ESL jobs. OK. Do them, check them every day, okay? They're a really good way of finding 
jobs being advertised, current jobs being advertised. They're also a good way for asking questions and also doing some research because you can search within the group for a company that you've liked the look of, see if anybody else is talking about it. OK, now um, let me just move that out of the way because I'm there we go. Uh, what I would recommend about the Facebook ones is read the post carefully. Do what it says. I look at these posts and I see so many people not doing what the company wants them to do. So, for example, it might say, send me an email. And I've got, I see loads of people underneath writing, yeah, I'm interested. PM, DM me. Or DM sent, but actually it says at the top, send me an email. Or direct message me and other people will say, I'm interested. Or tell me more. Recruiters won't react to that sort of thing. OK, they want you to do what they tell you to do. It's part of the application process. So please, it might sound crazy, but do exactly what it says and follow it clearly. If you're eligible, if you match that criteria, then go for it. OK, thank you. I can see some questions coming in. and I'm definitely going to get round to them in a minute. OK, I promise you. So the next thing, next place I think is a good place to look at is an EFL job recruitment websites. OK, so these um, are sort of special um, job websites where they just deal with jobs in EFL, ESL. OK, obviously, the best one, I think, is to go to um, the TEFL org website. So just type in TEFL.org. Uh, if you go here, TEFL jobs, you click on that. You can see here you can do some filters and I've done a filter here for online, but if you're not interested in teaching online there's also filters there for working in specific places and of course you can do here about degrees and not university degree not degree not need uh, not needed that kind of thing all right and i can see here look that um we've got a job here being advertised um for people to teach to latino adults or children um we've got one here about teaching uh into students in japan uh, you've got one here, um, teaching people in Hong Kong. Um, something here where you're teaching about UK exams. Uh, what's this one about? Task-based learning, which is a slightly different way of teaching, but but also it, it is similar. It, it, it's something that if you've got one of our qualifications, you will be able to do. Um, something that's worth looking up online if you do see something like that. Uh, fantastic. There's a voluntary job there if you don't want the pressure, if you want to just get into teaching and you don't want to, um, you're not too worried about the pressure of having to get the money. You just want to build a bit of experience to ease yourself into it. Perfect little job there. Um, some North American one there. Um, uh, that one is teaching kids. So there's loads on there. They will be different uh, wages depending on where they are in the world. And there will be different hours depending on the time zone of the student. So again, it's all worth looking at, checking it all, make sure it's all OK. So TEFORG is a good one. Next best one, in my opinion, because I've found many works. My first job in Vietnam, I found on this one. My first job in Japan, I found on this one, is this one, which is uh, ESLcafe.com. And it's quite an interesting website in the way it's laid out I think um, you can type in there something like online yeah uh, on the international job board uh, you can find a job and uh, there we go some teaching here that's online teaching kids on online one-on-one -on -one. Um, the Cambridge exams that'd be interesting I'd quite like that one um, business English IELTS teachers um, Latino student teachers again, part-time teachers. So there's all jobs here that these all quite re uh, recent. This one was posted, these two were posted yesterday here. So you might click on something like this. You might have a look. You've got to read through it. Sometimes, you know, they're not the most easily formatted, but part, that's part of job hunting. You've got to do it. What does he want you to do? Uh, available schedules, your full CV, and a one minute self intro video to this email address. So this is the kind of thing that you need to do. You need to have a look at, check your eligibility. If you're not eligible for that one because they want a degree or they want a native speaker, whatever it might be, go to the next one. Right? So that's the next website I would recommend, eslcafe.com. 
The third best one, in my opinion, is a company called Tefl.com. We are Tefl.org. We offer certificates. We offer courses to become a Tefl teacher. Tefl.com is more of a, a job finding and teaching ideas type website. And uh, if you click on this bit here, Job Seekers, um, I'll click on it just to show you. Um, you can go down the left hand side and it has face to face and online jobs. Uh, which country? I think there's an option to teach online. You click on search like that and you will see um, the jobs come up here for teaching online year round online only Iraqi adults. Oh, that sounds look at that. Two thousand eight hundred dollars a month. Lovely. I might get involved in that one. Uh, nobody do that one. I might have a go at that one. Um, fun and experience online teachers. There's other pages here. So definitely worth it. Have a look at it. See if it's you think it's good. See if you're eligible. Go for it. OK. Um, then there, there are more. These are not these are not just, I'm just those are the three I'm going to show you. Tefl.org, ESL, CAF and Tefl.com. But these are some of all of some of the other ones. OK, now. My advice when you get onto websites like this and you see lots of jobs being advertised, don't get overwhelmed. OK, take your time and read them on. It's not a question of quantity. It's a question of finding one that fits you and that you think will work for you in terms of the hours, the pay, that kind of thing. Don't get overwhelmed by it all. There's so many. Don't apply to loads at the same time. Take your time. Find ones that work well for you. OK, do some research. Those companies that you see are advertised, they will be they will have people probably talking about them, maybe on Reddit, R-E-D-D -D dot I-T. Reddit is a good website for, for discussing ESL jobs or EFL jobs. But also on Facebook, in some of those groups, you might find people that will say, what a great company to work for. Or you'll also get people saying, what a terrible company to work for. OK. Don't believe every comment. It's the Internet. Anyone can write anything at all. OK. Just look at it. You know, weigh it up. If that person's being really extremely negative about a job, maybe that's them. OK. You've got to give jobs time. You've got to check that they're for you. OK, I've started some jobs and in the first week I've gone, what a terrible company. By the end of it, I'm like, I quite enjoyed it. OK, so that's another place to find work, which is special job uh, websites for EFL work. OK, now the other things that the other things, if you want to work online, that you might want to think about are some websites such as Italki, um, Fiverr.com. Er, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but I think it's double R. Fiverr.com. You can advertise yourself as an EFL teacher on that. Uh, Lingoda.com, Verblin.com, Verbalplanet.com, Preply.com. Now, all of these sort of involve you being an independent teacher where you sort of sell yourself a bit as a good teacher and then students book you through that website. There's a lot of competition on them. Doesn't mean you're not going to get work, but there is a lot of competition on them. So you've got to put some time into um, getting the right video, put some time into making yourself look presentable and offering maybe a little bit of a niche, something that you can offer that nobody else can offer. OK, so it's, I'm not saying these aren't worth doing, but they do take time. Lots of information on our uh, blog pages on Tefl.org about these, but there's also um, information on YouTube and uh, lots of information on YouTube of people who've done this kind of thing. All right. If you if you've tried all those and some of them close when they've got loads of people applying. All right. If you're if you're having this issue, just type into Google online language teaching and you will find even more of these types of companies on there. OK, good luck with them. What my recommendation to you would be Try and find some work through one of these companies that is advertising themselves to give to get you going, to get you moving. And then also at the same time, maybe sign up for some of these. Don't put all of your eggs in one basket. There's a lovely British idiom. Um, I don't know if that's used in America and Australia as well. Is it put all your eggs in one basket? I don't know. Um, but work for a company and also set, you, set yourself up online as well. 
The other way is to make your own website, find your own students. And we've done videos on that sort of thing before. I haven't really got time to go into that right now, but that is something that you could do in order to find work. OK, some other websites that I would recommend that you look at LinkedIn. Now, I have a love hate relationship with LinkedIn. And I get I find that I get more people actually sending me sort of requests as a job there. I don't really get I've not been overly successful myself, but I I join I I I made my LinkedIn account after I'd already started finding students through my own website, that kind of thing. So I know people that do find work. What do they do? They do some search up here, online EFL teacher, and then change the location. Now, the problem is you I, I don't think you can put in the whole world in the location. All right. You can only do one country. So you might want to just play around with it a bit and say online. If you're not in the UK, online EFL teacher Australia will probably come up. Maybe if not many coming up, put in the UK or put in America or put in India or wherever you are. But change this location at the top. And you will see um, uh, you will see lots of jobs come up here. OK, please, if you've got any advice about LinkedIn, put it in there, because as you could probably tell, I'm not an expert on LinkedIn, but there's definitely lo loads of things that are coming up here. And, you know, I, I think once you sort of start delving into it and having a look around, I think that there's probably some jobs on there that would that would suit you well. OK, so uh, LinkedIn is a good place to find work. I think Guardian TEFL jobs. So there's a newspaper in the UK called The Guardian newspaper. Fantastic website. Very good for getting teaching resources from as well. If you're looking to make your own lessons, that's another that's another webinar. Um, they've got their own job section. Probably the quickest way to find it is if you type into Google um, Guardian TEFL jobs, um, that will come up. It's got its own section just for teaching English as a foreign language and um, 20 jobs there i don't know how many uh, you do sometimes see online ones there but you also see a lot of face-to-face -face ones on there so that might be something that's worth looking at guardian tefl jobs um then indeed uh so there's a company called um indeed i-n-d-e-e-d -E -E now again there's sort of regional sites for it there's regional sites, but if you type into Google I N D E E D TEFL jobs, you click on that. The first thing that comes up, uh, Alan, I don't know if you can make it bigger again. Um, I'm not quite sure if there we go. So you can see here online English teacher, 15 to 40 pounds an hour, uh, full and part time students and kids. Fantastic. Online uh, TEFL teacher, remote South in Southampton. Uh, there's even some manager jobs here. Uh, TEFL recruiters, online teacher. So there's loads of jobs and, you know, quite a decent wage, I think, as well here. So it's worth looking through these and see if you fit them at all. OK, if any of these work out for you. Very good website, I think, is Indeed. Now, you might have to at the top again, play around a bit with the location, play around with this. If it doesn't, if EFL or TEFL doesn't work, type in ESL. If um, type in ESOL, E-S-O-L, change the location, try China, try where you are, have a look around, see what you can find. Good website, I think, for finding work indeed. Um, and the other option uh, here is just literally just to go on Google and you type into Google. Sorry for looking away from the camera. I'm uh, um, on my second monitor. If you just type into Google TEFL jobs, more and more ones are sort of appearing down here okay again it sort of does it by location so you might want to you know try different ways of, of looking at it um it sort of tries to get all the jobs together so you can see here there's some tefl.com ones there's a there's one of our ones that comes up there. there's a company called there's one by a company called job serve learn for good although that doesn't quite look like a tefl job uh, job serve so again just a basic search on Google, taking your time, looking through them all. 
please ignore this bit that comes up. That's just one of the plugins that I've got. Um, if you look through all of those, I reckon you'll find some work there. So before I get to these questions, and please, I can see some great ones have coming in. I'm going to get around to them in probably about five minutes, um, maybe even shorter than that. Please put any more questions that you might have in. I'm, we're all going to be with you for about another half an hour. Um, some tips that I've got for you uh, if you're uh, looking to find work, okay? Um, take your time. I have trained people up and they say to me, I want to be an online teacher and they pass the course. They do a really good job either in one of our practical classes or on one of our online virtual courses. Um, they, they, they look, they, they, they think, right, I'm going to get full time work by the end of the week, by the end of next week. It, it doesn't quite work like that. You might get lucky. And I do know people that have come off my course and within a week they're working fantastic but take your time don't apply to lots of different jobs and do what it tells you to do on the advert make sure if you're eligible for it go for it if you're not eligible for it just be a bit sort of um careful about it okay you know do you want to spend that time applying for it but if it says i'm going to go into the native speaker stuff in a minute but just do what, exactly what it tells you to do. Don't miss off a bit. Don't rush into it and get your application wrong. Take your time, read it, check it. Be patient with companies once you've applied to them. Pestering them won't help. So if you are have applied and they don't reply to you within 48 hours, I've had people emailing me saying, Carl, they didn't reply within 48 hours. I didn't get it. Did I? I'm like, look, calm down, you know. There's lots of people probably applying. They will get through it. They want good teachers. If you've got a good application, they will get round to you. Pestering them won't help, okay? The system might be different in the country that you're applying to from your own company. So from your own country. So if you're used to people replying promptly, fantastic. Your country's amazing. But if you're going to apply for another country and they don't reply straight away, that might be the culture of that country. Try the different abbreviations. So try ESL, try EFL, try ESOL, try, um, you know, the TEFL, try EFL, all those ones that opens up more doors to you. Don't think because you have an EFL qualification that that's all you're going to get. Have a look at them. So EFL, try these ones. EFL, ESL, TEFL, ESOL. Try those ones plus jobs, plus online jobs, whatever it might be, that will help you. Don't be put off by the job if they only are for in part time hours. So if you want to work full time and you're seeing companies that just say part time, don't think, oh, I don't want to work part time. I need to work full time. Many of these companies start people off part time and then they they as they know that you're doing a good job as the students like you, as your prompt, as your Internet connection is clear, all that kind of thing. They give you more work as you go on. Don't be just think about maybe working for two companies part time at the start. You'll find one that likes you. You'll find one that maybe you earn a bit more money. You work for them more as the time goes on. All right. And if you really want to be an online teacher all the time, work on your own website, on your own Facebook group and try and find your own students. OK, that's the sort of thing that you need to do. If you are a non-native speaker and you want to work online and it says in the advert native speakers only, read, work out, try and either ask them or look at the comments underneath, send them a message, whatever it might be. What is their definition as a native speaker? And they might say it's somebody with a British, Irish, um, American, Australian, New Zealand passport. Is that native speaker or is that native nationality? Now, the, re the reason why they, they might say that is not because those people make better teachers. It's because probably the visa situation is easier for them. It's easier for them to pay you, that kind of thing. All right. But the other flip side of it is they might say native speaker when they actually mean English ability. If you are a non-native speaker, but you've got fantastic level of English and you can prove it with an IELTS 8 or a Duolingo course or a Trinity College course, whatever it might be, high level advanced certificate. If you can prove it, they might take you on as a native speaker. 
tell them, you know, message them, say, look, hi, I've got overall IELTS 8.5. Am I a native speaker? Yep, you are. Fantastic. Great. It, worth messaging them. Don't be put off just because it says native speakers only. Okay, think about the level. So I think that's me covering everything there. Um, if you, as I said, if you want more information, definitely go on our website. Go to tafl, T-E-F-L dot O-R-G. Click on the blog post there. There's loads of things about courses, lots of sections there. The blog pages are fantastic. None of them written by me. Type, um, that's probably why they're so fantastic. Uh, if you put in something there like online teaching, um, do a search. Uh, lots, lots of things will come up about teaching English as a foreign language. The one that sort of links very well with this webinar is, um, uh, where is it? Scroll down a bit. Have I lost it already? I don't know if I had it earlier. No, something about there was the, there's one where all the, the, the websites were listed. Uh, is it gone on to page two? Uh, oh, I can't find it. But I think Alan put the the uh, the, the link in earlier. He did. In fact, yes, he did. He put it in. He put it in earlier. Uh, thank you, Alan. You're a superhero uh, for sending that to me and have a look on there. And there's lots more information about um, lots more links lots more places to look at, lots more um, information here at the bottom that can help you. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Um, right. So let's get through to some of these questions and I'm going to scroll right back to four o'clock when we started uh, for the first question. Um, let me find out where the first question was. Um, Phil, I might be able to help you with that one that you said at nine minutes past four. You want to know about accreditation for your university to run TEFL or IELTS courses. Any suggestions? So you don't need to have British Council or you don't need to have um, Cambridge English permission to run an IELTS course. You don't need that. Um, so that's the first thing to run an IELTS course is to uh, you can just employ someone who knows what to do and build a course and you just start teaching it. You don't need to have accreditation from the governing bodies of the exam to run a course. You can just do it. OK, now to run a TEFL course to be a, a, an English as a foreign language centre. First thing I would do is I would message our Facebook page, see if we can help you out with that, that sort of thing. That's something that we might be able to help you out with because that's what we do. That's our bread and butter. But if you want to then run your own courses to train people up, there's lots of different types of courses. So you could you've got to you've got to find if you're going to create your own, you've got to get it accredited and that can be expensive, can take a lot of time. You could do something like running TKT courses or um, other types of courses. But the first thing I would do, if you want to make your centre run TEFL courses, is give us a message, see what we can maybe do. Let's talk. That sort of thing. OK, Phil. Um, Carlo. Hello. You expect to earn your TEFL certificate next month. Well done. You want to continue studying. Uh, OK, interesting. So you want to do extra courses. Really good thing there, Carlo. Um, so Everybody who becomes a, a TEFL teacher after doing one of our 120 hour courses, what they tend to do is sort of look about things that they want to specialize in, Carlo. So what you could do is, and Alan, I'm sorry, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, what you could do is go on our website, tefl.org, click on courses at the top, and there's lots of information here. What you might want to do, Carlo, is get some practical experience, something like one of our teaching online courses. Um, uh, so one of our classroom TEFL courses here, the virtual one where you'll spend the weekend or a couple of days with someone like me and you will actually present a class online. Might be something that you fancy doing. The other thing you might want to do is add on 
an extra module about specifically teaching English online. That might be something that you want to look at. Uh, we've got a sale on at the moment. Um, or the other option you might want to do is look at one of these uh, advanced courses, how to teach business English, how to um, teach young learners, do exam prep, that kind of thing. That will really help you stand out, Carlo, as a teacher when you're applying or make you even a better teacher if you're trying to find your own students. OK. Um, Carla, hello. Uh, do you have any idea of the implications about teaching online for a company based overseas? Any tax risks? First thing I would say is you've got to every country is different in terms of taxes so you've got you have to find out the responsibility yourself how do i work for wherever you are this is not financial advice this is just me talking about what i know and it might be wrong for you carla what i do is i in the uk i declare myself as self-employed i do something called a tax return every pound that i get coming in tends to not be taxed i get it taxed here now, if you're going to work for a company and they take the tax off in their, if you work for a Chinese company and they take off the tax in China, you tend to not have to pay tax here, is what I, I think. I don't do that, so I'm not so sure. You've got it. I'm sure there's people online that can help you. There is also, if you Google free, F-R-E-E, -E, tax advice, there's, believe it or not, there's a tax helpline that you can phone them and say, this is my situation. And it's run by an accountant and they do little shifts to try and help people start up businesses. That might be worth giving them a call. Okay. All right. I hope that works out for you, Carla. Um, and there's some ad advice from Christina. Fantastic. Good. Well done, everybody, for helping each other out there. Um, Elaine. Do we have a department that helps with resume? So if you've got one of our certificates, Elaine, you did your course with us here at the TEFL.org, send us a message either on Facebook or send us a message on our website. In the bottom right corner, there's a chat with us function. If you've got one of our certificates, we can definitely help you out with that. Definitely. If you haven't got one of our certificates, um, send us an, a message. We might be able to help you but we do tend to only help the people generally that have got one of our qualifications, okay? Um, go on our website, go on the blog page of our website. There's information there about writing TEFL resumes. I did a video about writing TEFL CVs. It will be on YouTube, it will be on Facebook. I did it before Christmas. Have a look at them, go for that, all right? Lots of information on there. We've got loads of accountants in helping Carla out. That's lovely. Um, Good. Uh, Jaffna, hello. If you finish your certification, can you get a job abroad without experience? Yes, Jaffna is the, sh is the short answer for that. Um, I did a webinar, was it last week, about how to sort of get yourself abroad in 2022. So that might be worth looking at, Jaffna. Um, again, our blog pages can help. The most important thing, Jaffna, is to get your certificate, get your qualification, and then look at ones that fit you. Now, you, all the time, I would be, once you've got your certificate, I'd be trying to get experience. If you don't have much teaching experience, look at your past history and jobs, put that down. If it's got any sort of customer facing role where you're using your voice, if you've got any sort of role where you were training, if you did any presentations at university, if you did any sort of group work or you led groups, that kind of thing helps to build up experience. It's not direct TEFL experience, but recruiters will look at that and think, okay, yep, that's a transferable skill to teach in. That kind of thing that, that might help you. Okay, look at that. But Jaffa, we've also done videos about this in the past. So go back through and have a look, see if there's any there that give you more information about that kind of thing. Okay. N Nina or Nina, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that wrong. Is it worth contacting school direct to see if they're recruiting? You want to work in Italy, it's not easy finding jobs that don't require a degree. Yeah, Italy is an interesting way to, to, look for, uh, to look for work. So I would go down the route of looking at language schools. Don't go down the route of high schools, primary schools. Find language schools. 
they tend to not need a degree so much. Now, if you're coming from outside the EU, you might need a degree to get into Italy. If you're within the EU now, you don't necessarily need a degree. Now, some companies might say, we only want people with degrees. But there are plenty of companies in Italy that will say, we don't need people with degrees. So that's something that's worth thinking. Definitely, if Italy is on your mind, if Italy is the place to go to, definitely email the schools directly, okay? Definitely see if they will help you out, okay? A lot of language school work in Italy is working part-time for a couple of different schools. So that could be that could be a stumbling block in terms if you're outside the EU getting you in because you tend to have to need to have a full-time contract with someone. But keep going, message language schools, okay? You will definitely find work in Italy. Syed, hello. Um, what to do if, what do I do if they ask for experience for my first job? So as I just sort of said, think about anything in your past where you've done any sort of training, any sort of teaching, anything at all where you have helped people to improve something. That is a transferable skill. Highlight that on your CV. Or as I showed you earlier, we have some voluntary jobs on our website. Start doing some voluntary work. It's also a company called refu.net. They offer course, they offer classes where you free of charge to refugees. That might be the sort of thing you want to think about. Side so if you the other thing to think about is look at around the around you wherever you are now. Could you do some teaching to your friends? Could you go to a language school and help out as a language assistant free of charge? You know, get some sort of experience that way. But try and look in your past side. You'd be surprised what sort of skills you might have had at university high school that is transferable and works well for a TEFL job. OK. Um, Catherine, uh, thank you, Alan. I have been in touch with our language school here in Shrewsbury. The UK in the summer is a fantastic place to find work. There's loads of work and hopefully this year, hopefully will be the year when everything all comes back up again. But definitely language school work in the summer is fantastic. Do I think I should do the Young Learners course? Exam? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I think that's something, Catherine, if you've got the time and you've got the money to do that, that is something that will help you a lot. That will make you a lot better teacher. It will give you a lot more confidence in it. Also will look better on your CV when you're applying. Definitely something you've done. I first started teaching young learners without any sort of qualification in teaching YLs. And I then went and did the qualification. My courses improved so much. Okay. Good luck with that, Catherine. Um, Sweepy, Sweepy38, what a cute name. Uh, any recommendations on intro videos? Be friendly, be nice, smile, don't talk too quickly. Play musicians ask for it and you always feel a tiny bit silly doing them. <laughs> Welcome to teaching English the foreign language online. You gotta look a bit silly sometimes. Ah. Um, you be not, the first thing they're looking for is your personality. The second thing they're looking for is your pronunciation. I sometimes talk way too quickly on things like this and I need to slow down. So make sure you're pronouncing the words correctly. That's something that they're looking for. Um, Try and interact with them somehow. So say, look, give them, you know, hi, this is my experience. I believe I can help you by doing this, by doing this. My classes will be to do. Talk, as if you're talking to someone, you try to sort of sell yourself, okay? But definitely the friendliest, the, the thing that they're most looking for is friendliness, okay? Lots of stuff online about this, Sweepy, and I think there's some stuff on our website as well about it. Good luck with that. Maya, um, if you're not a native speaker, is the, ac the accent can be a can the accent be a problem even though the pronunciation is correct? Unfortunately, yes. I I've got a really sort of London Cockney voice. When I sort of talk to my mates, I talk a bit like this, and my pronunciation goes a bit crazy. So like you know that airport, the big airport in London, the one where everybody goes into in London, it's called Efro, isn't it? Efro Airport. And people are like, whoa, that's not a very nice, I can't understand what you're saying because isn't that isn't the airport actually Heathrow? And I'd say, yes, it is, e Heathrow. No, 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 Carl. I know it's your country, but it's pronounced Heathrow. I have a TH problem. So there are lots of regions, different ways of pronouncing English. 
you probably need to have a teacher's voice. Get your teacher's voice going, Maya, Maya, sorry if I pronounced that wrongly. Practice talking to yourself, playing it back. What bits are a little bit difficult for people to maybe understand? See if you can just go and see if you can sort of change it. Work on it a little bit. Don't have to change it massively, but you probably do need to find a teacher's voice, Maya. Okay. Um, a Bums, hello. Um, interesting name. Which website allows to work in a broad or internship? Our website, yay, tefl.org. We offer internships. We have one running in Vietnam. And if you stay, if you stay peeled to our social media, next week you might find out about another one that we're starting to offer soon. We offer internships. This can be a good way of getting you abroad if you don't have any experience. Work abroad, you've got to get your qualification, ABUMS, and you've got to work on it and then start applying. Our website, tefl.org. Uh, Simon, you've taught for 30 years in college, uni, online. All right, Simon, you beat me, okay. Can I use prior learning experience towards 120 hours for qualification? Uh, no, you've still got to do everything on the 120 hour course. Where all that will come in, Simon, is when you're applying. I'm sure you'll get snapped up like that for sure. But you've got to, if you want to be a TEFL teacher, you've got to have a TEFL qualification. You can't get hours down because of all the experience you've had before. But what I would say to you, Simon, is probably the course, you'll be able to sell for it quite quickly. Okay. Um, hope that answers your question, Simon. Um, Ky Kayla or Kyla, hello, I like this one. It's an interesting one. How do I set up an online video group chat to teach English? Zoom or Google Meet? I like Zoom because it works in China as well. There's a special link to get round, well, not to get round the firewall, but it's allowed in China. So that's, um, I like Zoom, definitely. Uh, Zoom is the one I use. I've, I never use Google Meet. Okay, Zoom is definitely the way forward. Uh, I have asked people that people, some people do ask me to use Skype. I have no problem using Skype if that's what they want to do. Some people ask me to use Facebook. I don't like that. I get them onto Skype or I get them onto Zoom. Definitely. Um, we've done videos again on this kind of thing um, where I talk about the sort of software and the hardware you need to be an online teacher. Worth looking up. Okay. Uh, we're coming to our end, so if you do have any other questions, do put them in the chat. Uh, Leone, are there many opportunities for TEFL jobs in the UK? You have a TEFL certification, you have two years work permit for the UK. Yes, Leone. So, the big time to work in the UK is the summer, because lots of Spanish, Italian, Norwegian, French, Russian kids come to the UK and they spend lots of money in London and then they go off to learn language, they go off to learn English in lots of beautiful sound, towns and city around. Also working, loads of work in Dublin. So as, as much as I love TEFL.org, the best, the best site for working, for finding work in the UK is TEFL.com. That's where I found some summer work years ago when I was young younger and wanted to do lots of summer jobs so definitely go on to tefl.com and you will find work the other way of finding where there's lots of work in the uk is at universities during the summer they do something called pre-sessional courses good website for that is guardian jobs another good website for that is barleap.com or .org i can't remember that's spelled b-a-l-e-a-p that's not online work that's face-to-face -face work Worth having a look at those, Leonie. Loads of work from about June to September. Slightly less around Halloween time. And then it sort of picks up again around the, the term from Christmas running up to the summer again. Okay. Good luck with that, Leonie. Um, Christine, if you're paid by PayPal, which you've seen from some companies advertised, do you have to do a HMRC tax as self-employed in the UK? I would think so. 
yeah, it depends where the tax has come off, Christine, I think. Christine, I, I, like, I don't want to give you the wrong advice. I declare it all and I pay tax on it all, but none of my stuff is taxed already in China. You've got to speak to a professional, Christine. I'm, you know, I'm here in my three bed house, detached house. I'm not a rich accountant. You need to find a rich accountant. They'll help you out. Um, Anna, do you have any support for setting up a private website for teaching online? Yes, uh, we've done videos about it. On our blog pages, we've got how to set yourself up as an independent teacher. That's definitely one of the pages on our blog. Very, very quickly, you need to build your own website. You need to start do the marketing. You like, for example, Facebook groups, YouTube groups, uh, Instagram, all that kind of thing. You got to find a niche. Sorry, that's the first thing you need to do is to find a niche. What's that? That is working out what you're going to be the teacher of. Are you going to be Anna, the teacher of elementary level? students in portugal for example don't be anna that i'll teach anything because you'll get lost in the search engine there will be people with bigger marketing budgets than you who will get the students you need to find a niche and be the one that gets the search through so improve my ielts score portugal student for example i don't know i've got portugal in my head be that one work out a niche anna Lots of stuff on our blog post about that. Um, hey, Bums, you're a bit fed up. Keep trying. You're trying to find a job for six months. You don't get it yet. I apply for some of companies. Look, hey, Bums, look, you, I, I'm, I'm going to sound horrible here. You, you, is, your, is your grammar and your application on, on point? I can see you've got some little grammar mistakes in there. A company might not take you on if they can see sort of grammar mistakes You've got to make sure that your application is full on, properly, well done. Is your CV clear? We've done videos about this kind of thing. If you've got uh, one of our certificates, message us. We'll be able to help you a little bit. OK, I'll be happy to look at your application, eh, Bums, if you've got one of our certificates. Uh, I don't know, Christina, about the, the internship in Bournemouth. Sorry, you have to look at that and find out um we're coming to an end now is there any questions uh age limits carol uh so some companies some sorry some countries and i don't know about france some countries in france have an upper age limit on the visa it can be 60 it can be 55 depends on the country i don't know about france they they probably will have an upper limit on the visa if you need to get a visa okay Sorry, Carol. Um, Alan, did I find any 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 that I've missed that we need to do? I'm trying to read through them all. Uh, Myro Slava. Nice name. Good evening. I'm sorry. I probably butchered it. Sorry. When you get your TEFL certificate, do I need to legalize it for Norway? I don't know. No one's ever asked me that in my life. And should I take care of it myself or can you do it for me with the additional fee before sending it to me? I don't think we offer that, Alan, do we? Something to do to, to I don't think we can legalise our own certificates. I think that would probably be not allowed. Um, lots of companies online that do it. I don't know what Norway want from you. OK, um, uh, apparently there's a company called Hague Apostille. That might be worth having a look at. Um, go down that route, Myroslava. I don't know what Norway exactly want. Usually, if a company, if you're applying for a job, for example, in Norway, that company asks you to do this, they tend to tell you how to do it. So if it is a particular job that has offered you a particular role and you've got that job, say to them, how do I do it? And see if they'll help. Because sometimes they want you to do it in Norway. Sometimes they want you to do it before you come. OK, so I would contact them. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. Um, if I didn't answer your question, I'm really sorry. Try to get through as many as we could in the hour. I hope you found that was useful. Please go to our website, tefl.org, if you need more information. Loads of interesting stuff in there. Lots of jobs on there. If you want to do your courses, that kind of thing, get on there. Um, please, if you loved this, please type into the chat that it's been fantastic. If you did not enjoy this, please put into the chat why you did not enjoy it. Please like the video. It's nice to be liked. And if you're on YouTube, 
subscribe going to get more videos coming up there's loads more in the past that we've done that's worth having a look at as well thank you everybody have a good weekend wherever you are in the world bye bye